Okay, this is Debbie Dashinger, and we are live here. I am talking today about something that excites the heck out of me because I've had the great and auspicious honor of working with some amazing entrepreneurs out in the world, spiritual entrepreneurs, authors, speakers. I work with a lot of people like that. And um, so I'm here to talk to you about that subject because I'm about to roll out uh, our next class. And the next class is the Ultimate Visibility Formula. So pre that, I like to give away content to let people know what's possible. So that's why I'm here. Join me. I'm super excited about talking to you how to get interviewed on radio and podcasts in 60 days or less. This is a true story. So if you feel like you've got the calling to be interviewed, if you feel like being visible is going to assist you, then you're right. <laughs> and also, if, you know, if, if you've done it, but you've noticed I'm not really getting results. Like I'm not really sure what's going on. Or maybe you're only getting booked on small shows. There's a lot of reasons to get involved with information like this that would assist you definitely if you're working out there as a as an entrepreneur in any way, shape, or form, or if you've got a business, because visibility truly is everything, right? So that is the number one question. I find I find that all entrepreneurs ask. How can I get booked on more radio and podcast? How can I get recognized more for what it is I do and be out in the world? And uh, it's true. Um, and, and it, you know, made me kind of crazy because I would think, wow, this is debilitating. This is actually debilitating your space to have something that you're brilliant at. To have a message, to have a product, to have a service, to have a business, and then People don't really know you exist. And what's the easiest way to get out there very inexpensively? And that's to learn how to get interviewed, right? Radio podcasts, there, those numbers have doubled. Every year, radio podcast shows double, and they are looking for guests like you. So it's important to know how to get on those shows, right audience for your message or product. It's really important to know how to put something together one time so that you get a hell yes when you reach out. And then once you're on the show, what do you do, right? What, how do you handle yourself? What is a great interview? What, what are the components to look for? How do you know what to do? How do you not get nervous? Or if you don't get nervous at all, what are the components that are gonna create results like book sales, like launches, like clients, like followers, like your database is getting exponentially bigger? So there's a lot of things you could be looking for, but I can tell you the answer, whatever the question is, the answer is getting interviewed on radio and podcast. The great thing is you could do it as much or as little as you want. You could just do a sustainability factor of once a month right? Getting out of media just to keep the viral activity active. And then when you've got a launch coming up, a book launch, a product launch, a workshop launch, then you can bump it up because you want a lot of people to know what you're up to and who you are. And this is a way to get your message out in a local way, a community way, in a domestic way, and also in a global way. So there's lots of options once you learn how to do this. Um, it's so funny, I put a contact in my eye, but it's actually doing nothing. So clearly, I put it in the wrong eye. True story. Um, I see that it's brutal for entrepreneurs who don't know how to be interviewed or interviewed and not getting those results because you should be a guest on shows. And maybe you don't properly know how to get booked on a show, and that can be really overwhelming. So even if you have no experience in publicity, no knowledge of where the shows are, that's where I come in. I got this. I got you. Okay. And that's what's possible through understanding the ultimate visibility. So I'm just curious if you're there, type in. I'm going to shift my eyes over here a little bit and uh, see, if, see what who is writing in. And um, Lynn Brody, awesome. So if you're here, just write. Let me know that you can hear me. Let me know you're receiving this information. Let me know what questions that you might have. So I'm going to pop over here because I see there actually are comments. So um, awesome. Yay. Hi, Lenny. This is great. Good to see you. And Barbara, you as well. Barbara, 
you do something, it would be really good, even at a local community level, for you to start being interviewed. I can't say enough about this. I'm so passionate about it. So let me just ask you some questions, and let's see where you're at. Uh, because it's how can I get booked on radio and podcast shows? How can I get booked for interviews? How do I expand my visibility and become a go-to expert? How can I learn to articulate my message clearly so it's easy to understand? This is something that's very interesting to me. I was, I've was i been teaching this class, this ultimate visibility formula, for years and years and years. And I was... Um, about to redo it, right? Reboot because it's this year, right? Let's get a fresh new start, same class, same material, but everything changes. I change, my clients change. And I was really ready to deliver something. It was already, I thought, an excellent class, and that was the testimonials I got. But I was like, let's go like and put this on rocket fuel. And so I did some market research. And what was amazing, the great, here's in the great column. The great column is yay. I am already teaching what they really want most to learn. The shocking column was I heard people over and over talking about their message. I don't know how to message myself. I know what I do, but I don't really know how to like in one sentence, maybe two, 30 seconds. How do I articulate that? So that became exactly where we started in that last class and what we're, where we're going to start in this very next class is the message, it must be so solid, right? The other thing is press media kit and how to write the pitch letter. All of that is so important. That's another place we start in the ultimate visibility formula because like, we got to get that stuff down because that's what paves the way. That's what creates a lot of ease for us to get booked properly on shows. How can I be interviewed more? Some people want like I said, launches are important. Or maybe you're just feeling, you know, I've been doing this work and or I'm at the inception of my work. One or the other works very well. And it's just, it's time. Like, I feel it's really time for what I do to be exponentialized out into the world. So when you're ready for an event or just energetically, you know it's time for you to get out there then this is for you. How do I share myself and be vulnerable and safe while I'm on air? That is such a beautiful question that I heard a lot in the market research. And I love that people ask that question because you know vulnerability is very important because at some point, you're probably going to be asked to tell your story. And whether you've got a minute to do like the really fast cliff note version, or you've got some grace there to talk a little bit, more in depth, you know, your story is going to relate to us. It's, first of all, it lets us know you're human, but it also connects the dots. Like, why are you here? How are you here? You know, I can tell you my story, and maybe a little bit later on, I will. And I think it's usually a little surprising about why people end up doing what they do and where the wound was and how they somehow superseded and walked through to heal that wound and came out on the other side and had a lot of wisdom. And then they felt on fire about disseminating that wisdom to people like, wow, if I could learn that, if I could heal that, I could help you too. And clearly, that's why I teach visibility. So that portion is also really, really important is to come across and know that we can be vulnerable, but we're not, we're not a hot mess, right? We're not clearly stuck in the middle of something, and it is not the time, actually, to tell that story. JJ, oh, that's awesome. I just interviewed JJ. You're going to want to catch that one. Schiffer, good to see you. So without being prepared, what if you get interviewed? How do you know about totally freezing or bombing? When you're interviewed, how do you know about hijacking somebody's show? So if I've got hosts out there and they can testify to this, I've heard people say this, I've heard other hosts say this, I have not ever had this thankfully experience, but apparently it exists, where someone's being talked to about sound bites, right? And that's something I cover in Ultimate Visibility Formula. When you're delivering a sound bite, right? And I think that some people misconstrue what a sound bite is. And let me just clear that up right now. So a sound bite is a way to deliver really powerful information in a short, succinct way. You can use either or words. You can use comparisons. You can use statistics. You can use a way to describe something that is so visual that the impact is there, but it is said very succinctly. In fact, a sound bite is so powerful that if a production team were to edit out a lot of things and just use that for a trailer about why listen to this show, that sound bite would bring in an audience alone. 
So I say this because I think that there are some people out there who are wanting to be interviewed and they misunderstand what a sound bite, they hear the word bite, <laughs> and think that's what it is. And they're being asked questions on a show and they give sort of yes, no, that didn't really happen answers. So I've heard this, have, have never had this happen on my show, but no bueno, because people will never ask you back if you're not engaging, if you're not animated, if you don't know how to connect, if you don't know how to deliver content. So it's very important. And conversely, hijacking someone's show, right? If you tend to be a person, and I've had many people in my class, so it's okay if you're a recovering talkaholic, right? That's actually a great quality if you're chatty, right? But then it's about some, sometimes harnessing that in because you don't want every answer to be a -dum 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 -dum, like you're off to the races and, and uh, the show becomes many monologues, right, of an interview. What's really great in an interview is to mix up the pace, right? That's what makes a song great. You generally don't listen to a one rhythm song over and over and over again. There's usually the bridge, there's the chorus, there's the, right? Anyone who knows about song structure knows there's reasons, there's components that make it very interesting. Like a book, right? You don't want just one note, it would be so boring. Why would you turn the page and read the next chapter? And so it is with interviews. So we wanna make sure once you're a guest, you're not just talking, 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 talking. Like mix it up, have conversation, all very interesting. Uh, one thing that I hear over and over is, okay, what do I do once I have been interviewed? People don't understand actually how to use, A, their material, which can be repurposed, and B, how do you connect with the person you've just been speaking with during the show? Because the truth is, it's, an, it's a ginormous opportunity. In general, when you're booking the right shows, the right audience, the right size and an audience that will take action, you're dealing with an influencer. So you really wanna nurture that relationship, so important. So there is actually an afterlife to the show. If you, this was my grandmother's favorite word, I swear to God, like the last 10 years of her life, my grandma would say, abscond, he absconded. So every time this comes up, thank you grandma, I think about her and so, when you're done with your interview, do you abscond? Is it like kind of like peace out? Or do you spend time to thank the host who has a really beautifully nurtured audience that they're basically saying, I'm going to take time to introduce you, trust you, introduce you to my audience, trust you're gonna deliver great value and content because it's what they wanna hear, it'll keep them tuned in, because I've done a great job about keeping them plugged in. Oh, and if I have sponsors and advertisers, they'll be happy because the audience stuck around. And then, oh, by the way, I'm also gonna promote you, right? I'll probably be doing social media blasts and you'll be up on a site and there'll be replays and there'll be, it can be as, by the way, small as that, to newsletters featuring that, to, you know, somebody like me, I, my shows are in a lot of places and spaces. There's the visual component, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And then I'm on radio, I'm on three different radio uh, stations. And then I'm on, well, I think I'm on 10 of the major ones, but then through one of my radio stations, they're just so connected up, up they're just really connected. So they also exponentialize my show. Plus I'm in Spain on iVox, iVox, um, and yeah, around the world. So it's like, that's a big opportunity, right? And I'm on air over 12 years. So if you're given opportunities like that, or even it could be a show of a thousand listeners, but they take action, it's so important to thank your host at the very least to send them a thank you note. And if you actually get clients out of it, you know, let your conscience be your guide. I mean, I'll tell you, I could look around my place and I'm looking at artwork. Honestly, artwork, artwork. 
geode, uh, things that people sent me to say, thank you so much, cards, Starbucks, you know, so think about these things because these are me mega, mega opportunities. And by the way, they don't, when they're done properly, they don't just end. You don't just do one and done and it's over and then you get another one. There's actually a viral component when it's done correctly. So I can give you methods for don't don't you worry about the freezing or anything or if you make a, a blubber mistake it's like it's all good it's actually sometimes really fun and funny and the audience loves you even more if you do stuff like that so chill out I got you back <laughs> and I think one of the biggest questions is where are the shows where are the contacts I can tell you right now in my class alone you get 17 pages of back-to-back uh, shows and hosts and, and great places where you can just book yourself so I get everybody kick-started but there are actually ways to do that with great ease uh, yeah there are a couple of websites that you can get on and uh, yeah, I'm thinking about all the sites, and, and at some point I may talk more about that. But the, And you may want to ask more questions about that. So there are sites that you can do, and there are ways to do it. By the way, you don't have to pay for this stuff. You don't have to um, pay. Yeah. And when you know how to do it right, you don't have to pay. Like, you know, you can be your own publicist and do a bang-up job. So ultimately, what you can accomplish doing successful media interviews is fabulous. And I'm just wondering if you've wondered any of those things and if those that sounds familiar and if, or if you've written a book and you're like, cool, you know, now sitting out in digital land, uh, you know, and I could speak ad infinitum about books because that's the other piece of my expertise. I'm a book writing coach and I also have a company that is a done for you, fully done for the author guaranteed international bestseller and it is it is an awesome ride right when the author gets to sit back and enjoy it although I'm getting them lots of PR because I know how to handle that part too while I'm creating on their behalf but it's so important if you take the time to create a baby give birth to a book out in the world that it not just sit there and also if you're gonna hit bestseller also that can be a a one and done, right? So it's lovely to have that emblem on your book or in your bio, yes, but what are you gonna do with it? These are openings that can create a lot of treasures and I am all about the treasures. So if you've taken the time even to write a book, then this, trust me, is the other side. This is the conversation to be having. And I hope that you're open and interested in having the how can I get booked on radio and podcasts. So there are a lot of myths about visibility, and I want to bust some of them right out of the gate, uh, because there are so many ways that we can benefit from being interviewed. And I want to pull back the curtain a little bit, and I definitely want to give you some applicable, practical tools, things that you can start using right away. Um, so I guess I'm going to ask for your commitment, if you're interested in this, just stick around stick around to the end i um i generally hand out gifts like free bonuses well free they're they're costly but they're my gift to you i hand out bonuses i'm not sure how to do it here but people who are interested in being more involved you could totally pm me and you know even pm me and i stick to the end and um you know i'll try to pm you a gift haha <laughs> cuz cuz you're worth it yeah so just stay fully present. That's the only thing I ask. You know, turn off your cell phone unless you're on it right now and, you know, log out of your emails and just let's see how we can rock and roll you to the next right step so that you feel like you got some something that's going to move your needle forward. So I promised I might say a quick story about how I got into this. And and, and, and let me just preface by saying, bigger surprise. I had no idea I was going to be here. This was not in my thought form by any, by any means. I feel like my uh, intentions congealed into this. So it's been a fascinating ride. I started out as an actress and a singer. Ta-da. All I did from, like, inception of breath. In this human body I went to school I went to summer stocks I was taking singing lessons from the time I was a, a little creature and dance lessons and even though I could never claim I was a dancer I moved damn well because <laughs> I did a lot of musical theater and um, 
you know, traveled the world a bit doing that. I went to USC, I graduated in performing arts and dramatic arts, and, and then I got out of school and that's what I did. And, and at a very interesting time, a very interesting year when I was booking actually more jobs than anything else, I believe the toll of being an actress really weighed on me. And the toll meaning that I would work, 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 get paid, 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 and then whew, it was like Siberia. <laughs> it was like I was out in the cold and nothing was happening. And it was very difficult for me because really, like astrologically, all my planets are in creativity. And if I'm not creating, it was so painful. And then I'd work, 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 work. I'd audition, audition, work, 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 get paid, get paid, get paid, and then whew, again. And it was really taking a toll. That and how difficult it was to take a vacation, uh, how difficult it was to get medical insurance and dental insurance and, you know, all these things. And I just, I couldn't stand, frankly, being galloping ar around the racetrack of life in my career, and then all of a sudden my, my horse would stop and buck me off. And then I dust myself off, and maybe three months later, I was back in the horse, and everything was awesome. And really, decades of that took its toll. And I didn't know what was happening inside of me because my whole identity was as an actress and a singer. And in a year when I booked more roles than anything, I had a movie role. I had a theater that was traveling the country, um, being booked. Uh, it was being uh, directed by Ted, blah, 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 from The Love Boat. Can't remember his name. Um, and, uh, yeah, Martin Sheen's brother was in it, Joe Estevez. Just he and I, two-person show, acting and singing, and ready to travel the country. And then other amazing things all at once. And something inside of me was like, dying really and it was mostly dying because i was getting a lot of mixed uh impetus for me about doing this and the things i would typically do for any role and god i worked hard was suddenly starting to wane and it scared me like it it, it was not right because if i wasn't going to show up as a professional i wasn't going to show up so that was the year when everything changed i couldn't get rid of the feeling I couldn't get rid of the fact that it, there was more and more back off, and I literally had to surrender. I had no information, none. I knew not what I was going to do, so I let go. And during the time that I let go, one thing was for sure, I still was creative. That wasn't going to go away. So I started making jewelry, and I made jewelry, and I started selling it in five stores across the country. And I loved it until I didn't. And in that time, concurrently, I was asked, uh, somebody heard me sing at a holiday party and they said, oh my God, we've got this big band. Would you come audition? I did. I got the part. Or I guess that's what we, I still call it. I got in the big band. And so I, for years, sang with a big band and it was lovely. You know, people love to hire us and also with a jazz band. And then concurrently, I joined Toastmasters and I started doing speaking about balance and life goals. And then and then suddenly in the middle of that, I get a call out of nowhere where somebody says, hey, a producer mentioned your name. I've got this series and I'm looking for a voiceover artist to do some cartoon work. And I'm thinking, I've never done cartoons, but I'm not going to tell him. And he said, so you're one of the actresses that was recommended. Can I send you the script? I'm like, yeah, sure. Read the script. I loved it. Loved. Fell in love with cartoons that moment. And um, amazingly, not amazingly, booked the part. Got it above the other actresses and uh, made nice money, had a blast doing it. And then I was like, I know, that's the thing. I'm going to do voiceovers. Got an agent. I was going out every day for voiceovers. And that was really fun. And I was trying to find a way to get my voice out there even more. And what happened was I saw an ad for radio. And I went for it. And that's kind of before podcasts or podcasts were like this big and no one really understood it, but I got it. And that's where my career started with my show dare to dream. I really didn't like radio my first two months, just so you know, cause I was only doing a music show. And even though music is a huge part of who I am, um, it wasn't feeding my soul. 
And then the owners called me in and said, we love what you're doing. We're ready to give you your own show. We've got an hour show slot for you. Go think about it. Come back. And I mean, it was like a download. This was everything I'd been doing metaphysically, entertainment wise, speaking. When I started speaking professionally after Toastmasters, I wanted to teach people how to create dreams into their reality. End of story. And I started doing that show. So I just want to share with you why it's so funny that I teach what I do and how I deeply understand what people go through. So on the one hand, after many years of doing that, I thought, oh, I, I'll, I'll write books. I'll write books and I'll help people even more understand how to create their dreams. There were these books. They became international bestsellers. And suddenly people were coming to me and saying, I'd like to interview you. You're, you're an expert. I am. And uh, I started doing these interviews. So here's what I want you to know. I socked eggs. I was so bad. When I listened back to my first interview, and I hope it's still not out there, it was mortifying. Literally, this gal asked me one question. I'm not kidding. I talked the whole time. I just had no idea what I was doing. But I knew when I listened back, this was bad. This was bad. If she asked me back, she's on another planet. And... I got to do something about this because people are asking me. So it became my mission to research, to study, to get schooled, to do anything and everything to understand the art of being interviewed. And for years, that's what I studied. And then I'd implement and see results. And I'd implement and see results. And then entrepreneurs would say, how are you doing that? Can you show me how to do it? Ah. We'll throw together a class and I'll teach you. And they were going out and getting results. So this was big for me. I also want to share very vulnerably with you that because of circumstances of how I grew up, that there was an enormous wound for me around visibility. So I thrived from the time I was really little because it is my soul's mission to be in front of a camera, a microphone, a light, or whatever. At the same time, I was plagued with self-doubt, plagued with insecurities, and a voice that said, you're not worth hearing. You're not worth lit being listened to. And I had to go on a big-time healing mission because how are you this, built for this, right, to interact with masses, if you will, and yet have all this pain around it. So it became my mission to heal myself, heal or heal thyself. And when I came out the other side, I felt, my God, I want to help everybody to understand how they can be this, do this too. I'm at an interesting crossroads in my work right now because I do tend to attract so many spiritual entrepreneurs, my tribe, clearly. And because of that, uh, there is an element to heal the healer within my work because visibility is an inside outside job. It's absolutely what shows up on the outside. And yes, what we're willing to step into and do. And at the same time, for each person I work with, I see no matter how high functioning on the spectrum, there's still those spots that plague them. And it's so beautiful to see people have a complete healing in these areas and just have like, I can't even believe that existed so much freedom. So just know for you too, if that's a place that you have any experience that you too can get through this. Um, yeah, no matter where. And yes. Um, thanks Meredith. I appreciate it. So yes. Uh, so yes, all that and more, the big bump, the big bump of learning to say, you know, I'm afraid, either I'm not afraid anymore, or if there's still some fear to just do it anyway, to grab the mic, to grab the spotlight, to have a voice, to speak my truth, to show up, to support myself, to say yes, even if it's uncomfortable, because always, always on the other side of that, it's like, oh, that was so good. I'm so glad I did that. I so needed to be there doing that in that moment. Learn that everything that happens to you is but a short chapter in a much greater story. 
and we all have the power within us to rewrite our next chapters how we choose and that's really how I got here today that I felt no one should suffer some of the neglect that I experienced growing up that would create any of those kind of thoughts that would stop you and that whatever it is that is your brilliance just know that's your special sauce that you came here to share. And so if you're not out there sharing it, talking to people, being interviewed, then it's sort of a crime against humanity, right? If you're a light worker, oof, you know this is your time. So if all that is stopping you from being out there, then truly, you know, go to the web page, and I am going to keep talking and sharing, but go to the web page, please. Go to Debbie D D E B B I D dot net slash visibility because you can switch all of that around. So I know that along the path, I said yes. I said yes to things that were going to further my skills and career. Um, some people out there muscle test, some people out there, you know, just have a feeling, some people, I've always been very, 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 very fortunate uh, in having a sense of like, I know I need to do this. You know, that feeling in your belly, like you're hearing someone speak or you're seeing somebody present something or you're hearing them being interviewed. There's so many ways we can meet people these days and you just know like, okay, you're next. You're you're my next coach. This is the next piece I'm going to be handling. So I've been very fortunate. But like I said, when I took on this research, it was like I was not going to stop till I turned it around. And here's what I want you to know. The beautiful thing about being interviewed is in the beginning, try then. It is some work. You bet. What is it? But you know, you put together your pitch letter, you put together your media one sheet and in general there's not much you need to do except find out where the shows are and the hosts that connect with your message that you're aligned and once that happens and you're doing it enough i think maybe everybody's line for enough is different but i know it's happened for me and i know it's happened for my clients that at a certain point i literally do not have to pick up the email pen i am offered interviews so often it created a life force of its own now if you're doing a launch that could be a different story because you're going to be targeting really particular people also by the way usually by the time you start launching something you've gotten your career from here to here right so you're it's so backwards here it looks totally bizarre but you've gotten your career at a whole nother level so you're ready for the next level even of shows or the next level of shows is ready to say yes to you. And that's a, that's a big hell yes. What can you do? I can stay at home. I do stay at home. This is where I work from. I can mess with my loved ones. I can create, I do create my own work days and hours. It's actually getting better and better and better these days, which I rather love. I love having a Friday off, to be honest with you. And I love having my weekends and I love that I can travel. I was just notified that I was nominated for a Susan B. Anthony Award in uh, Canada. And I don't know if Keith is here, but I, I think you may have been part of um, getting, thank you. Thanks, Patricia. That makes me feel awesome. Yeah. Anyway, I was just nominated for the uh, Susan B. Anthony Award. And it's like amazing that um, they're doing this whole women's empowerment thing in Toronto, Canada. and like the names are pretty impressive of who's in this event. And I'm thrilled because frankly, that's been my intention this year. You know, I've worked so long. And when I first started my show and I first started being interviewed and writing my books, I, I did get awards. And then, you know, it went wherever it went. It just, I wasn't conscious of it, but it has been up for me. And so I, I'm thrilled. And the point of being nominated for award is they're like, you know, could you be in Toronto August 26th or whatever the date is, but it's like, dude, that's next week. I could, you know? It's so beautiful having a lifestyle where, you, where what you do, how you speak, how you interact, whether it's teaching, whether it is your books, whether it is your interviews, media works for us. Visibility is the diggity bomb. It creates a life force that is so positive and compelling of its own. And so, yes, I can leave because of my lifestyle today. And truly, I attribute it to visibility, 100%. So, yes, I found a, a receipt recently from 2000, 
and seven where I invested like five grand in this um, this media training. And I'm so glad I did it because, you know, between that and all of my research uh, and studying and putting myself out there as the guinea pig, it, it worked, you know, investing in oneself really works. So the second thing I did is I particularly, I have been involved with a mastermind group. I think I've been a part of it, um, I think eight years, seven, eight years, pretty much since its inception of one, one of the founding members. It is um, a global mastermind of influencers. It's part of a community. It's good for me because there's other entrepreneurs, coaches, authors, speakers, healers in that space. And why that was important for me, why learning from somebody else, again, was important for me is because I had zero business background. I was an actress and a singer. What are you kidding? Give me a script. You know, tell me when to show up. Tell me when to be off book. Tell me if I'm stage right or left. <laughs> but business acumen, I didn't get it in school. I didn't get it. Sorry, USC, tell them the truth. But that wasn't part. It's, and it's funny, right? Because the word is show business. Someone left out the business. <laughs> so I had show but the rest was gone. And so I had to learn, oh, okay, I'm running a radio show. I'm getting ad advertisers and sponsors. I'm starting to be interviewed. I'm running a business with my books. Oh, uh, people want to be coached by me around books and about being interviewed. And, and I'm doing private sessions, group sessions, workshops, online. I needed to learn how to do a business. So being part of this mastermind was tremendous for me. Because I learned from people, woof, really, I learned a ton. Let's face it, anybody who's ever done business, I feel like grabbing a piece of paper and just, you know, showing. But, like, even if you wrote a letter, I remember learning, seeing an envelope and seeing somebody show me how to fold, that this is how you fold a business letter and put it in an envelope. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> like, so much. I learned everything. I was a hungry baby. Um, so yeah, I mean, once you start learning how to do your business, then you've got to have some business, put it out there. And uh, it is, it's so funny, I'm glad I'm making you laugh. And then other things started coming. Let me tell you, I'm just showing you, this is from being visible. This is from being interviewed, swaya, and doing the do. I started being invited to speak on stages. I started being interviewed, to date, it's around, I would say over a thousand media outlets I've been interviewed on. I was a keynote speaker at a red carpet event in Calgary, at the Global Influence Summit, at the Business Success Summit, at the Los Angeles Conscious Life Expo, at the New Living Expo, and of course, way more since then. I have met so many awesome, famous people. I don't know that this would happen for everybody, but you know, I do do red carpet interviews, and I've had the grace of being invited to some like off the hook events, parties, mostly home things. And some people came on my show and some people I developed relationships with, platonic people, but I developed relationships with, you know, that went on, um, that they would call on me for things. Or if I wrote a book and need endorsement, it was like, I could say in an e intimate email or phone call, hey, would you be willing to do this? And it continues to happen today. It is the influential circle I dreamed of. I have to be honest. For anybody who's ever looked from afar, people said, damn, like, that looks like a cool person. I wonder what it would be like to be friends with them. And then you are. Like that becomes your reality. Or if it's not them, it's somebody akin at the same level. That has been very meaningful to me. Plus, because um, I've got the number two in my numerology, which means connect, it's all co, right? Connection, collaboration. It's all about being in relationship with others. And um, so as autonomous and free-spirited as I am, which is true, and cave woman time must have, I also do relish, thrive on relationship. And to know that, uh, I don't know about you guys when you were growing up, but I would dream of like, ooh, you know, the kind of best friends I would want or circle of friends I would want. And I, I live that today. I have such gratitude for that, that I live that today. So 
So there, so I'm just wanting to check in. Keith, yay! Keith can right away. Keith was in my last class and uh, he's doing a freaking amazing job. So yes, I have spent time with Paula Abdul, Mike Rowe of Dirty Jobs, Steven Tyler of Aerosmith, uh, the singer composer, Melissa Manchester, four time NBA champ, John Sally, who's fucking hilarious, by the way. Oh my God, that was a great interview. And we did develop the most hilarious relationship. He's a really interesting guy. That, that, that's another Facebook Live. Um, actor Ian McShane, um, the three tenors who sang Hallelujah to me. I was plotzing, but I was acting very cool on the outside because it was the coolest moment. So yes, and the other thing is about being interviewed, you can quickly build up your database, right? You can quickly increase the people who know you and you can refer to when you're putting things out. You can be invited to do things and speak places that you wouldn't otherwise. Super important. Maybe you want to create your own coaching business or have your tribe find you, your community find who you are. Being visible does that. You start connecting to new groups of people. Here's the math that I always think of. Okay, if podcasts every year double, this is true statistic, double, double, double. Five times more people listen to podcasts than watch TV, by the way. So that's going on. You're getting on a show. Let's say they have a 1,000 well-nurtured listeners. You never met them. You're being introduced to a 1,000 new people. Ta-da. Let's say you do five of those a month, 5,000 brand spanking new people. Let's say per attrition, right, that 10% of those people will take action. Sorry, those numbers are still looking pretty good to me. 500 people may follow up may want to know more, may attend something you do, buy something you do. So you've got to understand there's a, a ginormous credibility factor to this. I could share some testimonies, I, and I could even bring Keith on to do one of his right now. Um, you know, I had Alana, one of my students, who said, thank you for seeing me, getting me, supporting me. I appreciate you so much, XL. XOXO. I had Renee who said, thank you so much for all you're showing us about interviews. That is extremely unique and important. Um, as a guide, as a teacher in media visibility, you're so happy and upbeat. No, I'm not. I can feel your genuineness. My friend who is also in your Ultimate Visibility program texted me after the first class saying, I love her in the group. I can really see how this is going to be an extremely powerful course. Thank you so much for introducing me to these radio and podcast shows and all the contacts you provided. I'm going to be interviewed on many of the shows already. I'm already booked. And after last night's class, I feel so confident. I'm thankful daily that you've been brought in my life. Uh, Jennifer, thank you so much, Debbie. I get so much incredibly valuable information from working for you. I'm enjoying this continued journey. It is so worth it. I've got many more, and um, there's Erica, Jeff, and Brenda, and Julie, and Frank, and Keith, I know you're in there somewhere. Look, my clients have saved over $50,000. You do the math. Uh, if anybody knows what it costs to bring on a monthly retainer, for a visibility person, a PR person. They, I can tell you in LA anyway, they start at five. Um, more recently, I'm hearing $15,000 a month. I guess that's a good team. But what I know is that across the board, there's no guarantees. You're basically paying somebody and hoping. I've heard lots of different things about that. But what if, what if you're in a situation where you say, I would really rather not, maybe down the road when that money's just coming in and I'm thriving at that level, cool to pay somebody but for today I still want visibility what if you could do this yourself and save fifty thousand dollars or more a year and handle your own visibility meaning getting interviewed on radio and podcast so again if that's of interest to you go to debbied.net slash visibility just remember my name does not have an e at the end because I'm like a ribeye steak Debbie just remember Debbie D but call me Debbie debbyd.net slash visibility. Um, so yeah, you know, it's so cool that you can save on publicity fees, travel, because have computer and decent Wi-Fi, you can. You don't want to do an interview on your cell phone. I don't care what they say. Run me out of town, go ahead. But you don't want to do it on your telephone because if you have 
even an iota of wonky. I could tell you my radio show, my radio station, they'll like, bye bye. They don't even want uh, to know you because cell phones, we all know, can go poop in a minute. Uh, you do become, here's the best thing about being interviewed, you become known as a go-to expert. Literally, it builds up an idea about you out there. And here's what I love about people get interviewed a lot. When my clients get interviewed a lot, what I see happen is somebody is creating something or they're redoing something. They've got an event they're doing again or a panel they're doing again or a radio show they're doing again or uh, maybe they're doing a series or maybe they're writing a book and they say, they don't say because it's subconscious, but subconsciously they've been seeing your name everywhere. Oh, they've been on this show, that show, this show, that show. Yeah, their name keeps popping up on social media or in the newsletters. Oh, I need somebody. Why don't I call Keith? He's an expert in health and wellness. It is what happens. So you want to be in the position of being thought of first as the go-to expert. You will at some point not need to submit yourself. Your presence actually does that on your behalf. People start to know you. I can tell you this, and I, I'd love to hear people right out there who are very visible, right, to provide if this is a testimony for you as well, if this is truth. I literally will go to workshops, and people will come up to me, and oh my God, Debbie Dashinger, but a bit of as though I know them, I don't know them, but they've been following me. They've been listening to me on shows and series on my own Dare to Dream show, maybe reading my books. But all of this amounts to something, and people will come up. And it's when it first started happening, I gotta say, ah, oh, maybe there was some ego in the beginning, but at the same time point, I'm a little bit. I don't know. It was weird. Like I was at the workshop to work on me. <laughs> so I was like, hmm, I just lost my anonymity. And then, you know, whatever. You learn to gauge this stuff because most people are actually focused on themselves. So that lovely interaction becomes they can then focus on themselves. I focus on myself. We, we move on. But I started to realize, ah, these are good statistics. I'm even seeing it happen when I walk in a workshop, when my clients go to workshops and they come back and go, that was so amazing. I walked in and like all these people knew me because they've heard me or they've quoted me. That's what you want. And that's what is possible for you. The world impact, I mean, I was talking about the numbers before and the statistics. It is so, it is true that if you did five 1,000 listener audience interviews each month, that's 5,000 times 10 months. Let's say you take two months off. I mean, are you doing the math? Would you chat down below if you're here, if you're following this, if you're, if you're digging on what visibility can do for you and how this can change your life? And, and anyway, what is 10 times 5,000? Or make, make it 12 months if you did five interviews. Come on, I want to see if you're breathing out there. So I also like the fact that all of this generates income, right? All of this positivity uh, being known and seen out there creates a career uh, when you're an expert and people want to work with you. And it lets me do some things that are important to me. Like I like to eat yummy, healthy food. I can afford it. I'm a certified wine specialist. And one of the great things is Becoming certified in wine obviously helped this very pedestrian woman who used to go to restaurants and like not know how to order wine. And I knew I liked it, but I didn't know how to really order wine. I felt kind of stupid, actually. I remember one time I, was at the, I, had a, I have a friend who's very, very wealthy. And he's done really, really well for himself. And he's very cultured. And I was at one of his parties. It was very intimate. It's just some of us. And I remember we're all sitting around. He, oh, he has like a wine cellar, like you just want to die and go to heaven. It is the most, <laughs> you have to do Lama's breathing. It's so beautiful. So I remember he was serving wine. And so I didn't realize like you could have different wine with different courses because they pair differently, right? So I remember he, <laughs> oh my God, poor girl. So I had my wine glass and maybe there was like that much red wine in it. And he opened a whole new something, something. I mean, this was a whole new, God knows this man, 500,000, 2,000 and up dollar bottles of wine. 
And so he was going to go around and now pour this completely different, different grapes, different region, different reason for drinking it, you know, different tastes and smell points. And, and I like pulled out my glass for him to put it in with some of the other previous wine in there. And he was very kind and gracious, but I felt very stupid. And he's like, um, why don't you go in the kitchen? And just rinse that out. You know, I'm like thinking, oh, you're supposed to do that. So, okay. Little sidetrack. But just so you know from whence I come. So I wanted to learn about wine so I could like show up and kind of know WTF and order well. But it became a freaking thing once I took one class. It's like, hey, I should have known. I should have had a V8. And so at first I took Wine 101, which was all about identifying from the nose and the palate, which led to wine pairing, which led to Spanish wine which led to master Spanish wine, which led to Italian wine. Okay, you get the point. I still do tastings once a month with North American Sommelier Association. So it allows me to do that stuff. Like, honestly, having this lifestyle of flexibility, I kind of imagine not, right? I, I can't imagine not having a lifestyle that supports me to do things that I love. Now, yes, people forevermore, amen, kept saying, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with your certifications? I don't know. I don't know. Drink? <laughs> Honestly, I don't. I mean, people, I think, wanted me to start a podcast for a long time, and that sounded good, but I don't know. I'm, I follow energy. That's all I can tell you. Energy tells me what to do next. And uh, yeah, um, so I didn't do much except drink really <laughs> and i'll probably i'll probably next take the american wine class because that's what calls to me because god damn it between you me and the wall i want to i want to take a wine test in a language i speak capish capito i mean that a lot i'm not even going to talk about the wine tests right you need to be put on antidepressants when you do that but on top of that then to take in another language like Okay, so I'm ready for Americano, if you know what I mean. Okay, <laughs> so that said, oh, she's making herself laugh. I'm glad I'm having such a good time with me. So podcasting, being interviewed, media, all of this has really impacted my life, right? And I would say the other thing, and I see Susan is here, so I know you can relate, and probably many of others of you. So I dreamed... I'm born in the year of the dog. I always wanted a dog and I never thought I could have a dog and I really couldn't have a dog because like they require time. You can't just go, go to work for the day. Bye-bye. You know, I might have an event at the end. Maybe I'll see you at midnight. I mean, you have to be like a really good parent. So I, I, uh, I was concerned about that. I wanted to be a really good parent. And so I, um, I did babysit dogs for periods of time, two weeks, one month for people. And I learned, oh, not only am I really skilled at this, but every time the person comes to pick up their dog, what they don't know is I'm away in a closet crying. Literally, it's true, it's a true story. They would come and I know they were coming and my heart would start to break because I was so attached. And they would come to the door and I'd be like, oh, yeah, this dog was amazing. And, you know, he's changed, whatever. And, you know, the person's exhausted. They're coming from the airport. They're like, let me have my dog. I love you. You're the best. Thanks. Bye. Ah! And I was, I was just hysterical crying. It was so painful. And I was like, okay, time for a doggy. So I have my doggy. She's sleeping. But, you know, again, visibility, career, lifestyle. It created something that allowed me to even fulfill that dream of my first dog Shelby Shelby the dog Shelby Lem Lemon Ivy who doesn't understand microphones or cameras or spotlight at all even though she's been on a red carpet many times and I've tried to put her on camera many times and I don't know we may have to have her work with a dog psychic or maybe it's just not her way I don't understand how a Leo does not want to be in front of a camera but yeah she's just like I support you mama go do your thing so I can be nearby. So I have a lot of dreams that have come true. <laughs> and, um, and maybe Shelby will take my class. She'll take the ultimate visibility formula and she'll be like, I'm Shelby the dog. I've got an Instagram. I got an IG page. You know, <laughs> I got a calendar. 
she would have a great calendar. Oh my God, that dog makes me pee in my pants with laughter every day. So I'm curious if you would post here, what would getting free PR mean to you? What would free promotion mean to you? What would being interviewed on radio and podcasts as often as you like mean, do for you? What would having relationships with media influencers allow you to do that you currently cannot? And it may feel like a rhetorical question, but I want you to actually type here in this message chat box and let us know there's no right or wrong answer. It's just instead of you being the best kept secret, what would having a distinguished and unique media presence allow you to do that you currently can't? I am curious, inquiring minds want to know. And here's the next question. What's the issue? Why can't that be you? Why can't you be doing that, being interviewed exponentially, as much or as little, that will serve your needs right now? Why not you? Why can't you feel amazing and confident being interviewed? Why can't you know where the shows are? Why can't you know what to do after? Why can't you already have things put together so in a moment's notice, it takes nothing to get booked and say yes? So just imagine sharing your message with hundreds of thousands of people and changing their lives. What would that feel like? What would it feel like to have people know you and what you do in advance of you ever meeting them? What would it feel like to be Invited to collaborate with influencers that you admire, asked to speak on panels or at events, have your potential clients find you easily so they can work with you, get your message out to the masses. What would it be like to have a client give you a paycheck like you've dreamed of but haven't yet received? Or signing autographs. I don't think I've done that yet, but you could. Or take pictures with audience members. I've had that. We're like, oh, a Dashinger. Cool. I guess you're talking to me. Huh. So maybe you're going to fly places to do things or go first class or travel with what you do or be paid for what you love just by being part of the interview circuit. Why cannot that be you? Why shouldn't you be up there and you be the successful one? Because you're known as an authority, right? And your media interviews you put you in a position of visibility, giving you the attention that you deserve. And it's so worth it. It's so worth it. You can be profitable. You can have fun. You can create more media spots when you want them. It's good for your business. It's book, good for your book launch or your workshop or your event or your services. When you know the system, and you can have massive support around that. So I can share some results but you know I, I really want to say for those of you and some of you here even on this have taken the ultimate visibility formula I'll tell you something I do because I love my students so much they're like family so people go through it by the way it's only six weeks on zoom and then you also get a free I bonus you a coaching session that you don't even pay for, but is my gift to you because I really believe we have to interact in a mano y mano, woman y woman -o kind of level. I need to know your deal, dealio around visibility so that we can strategize and get you moving forward, which is a beautiful thing because you've got all this yummy class support. And God, I attract amazing people. So I'm telling you, if you're part of it, you're amazing and you will meet other really amazing people. And then you get this also individual apart from that nobody gets to hear but you and I session. And then you bring that back so you are carted on the wings of love very quickly through the class. You will end up with your press media kit. You will end up with your pitch letter. You will end up with 17 pages, I mean. You could use them for the next year, if you like, to book yourself on very specific shows. You will end up with coaching. You will end up with your message. And more and even more if you go to the debbyd.net slash visibility. Remember, ribeye steak, debi, D-E-B-B-I, D.net slash visibility. It's got all the, the specs there. So anytime we do anything like this, we're not going to, anything we take on, we don't just magically wish on a star and we get results, right? There is a minimal amount of work 
and then the dream results come. So it, 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 let's be practical about this. I think what you get is tremendous support, practical application, all the pieces, all the templates, everything you need to create a credible, interesting interview, what kind of content to deliver, how to be confident while you're on air, how to know exactly how to position yourself, what to do at the end to get results, and then when it's completely done, what are you going to do to establish that relationship with the influencer, and what's your next step? You know, a hairdresser has to go to cosmetology school for 1,500 hours just to learn how to do hair. A photographer goes to school for at least two years so they can become a professional photographer. And for you, it also takes time to learn new skills and change your habits so you can get amazing results. So can we all agree that six Zoom sessions of training, it's like, oh my God. And within that time, you will have everything needed and be booked on radio and podcast. Ta-da. You do the work. You, you show up and do what we engage in together. It's going to happen. It happened to everybody else. So this is really a lifelong journey that you're opening up yourself to of ultimate visibility. Are you ready to get started? I'm so ready to teach you. And if you're ready, just type it in the chat box. I'm ready. Let's do this or buckle it up, people. Write something in there so I know you're alive and breathing. Otherwise, I'm going to send somebody out to do some CPR. And I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't promise that they're going to be gentle. Right? So three myths. Let's, let's bust them right now. Three myths that just ain't so. Tell me it ain't so, I'm going to tell you. The first myth, myth, it feels like I have a speech impediment, but that's the word myth. Myth. I don't myth you. I, I'm telling you about I'm busting a myth. Okay, so the first myth is you have to be well known to be interviewed or you have to have a big mailing list to succeed with media interviews. Not true. Myth number two. You have to ex hire an expensive person or team to get booked on radio and podcast interviews. This is something that really holds people back when they're ready to fly because it's a hefty monthly retainer fee, right? And it is not true that you have to hire someone at all. Myth three, you must know everything about your subject and be able to answer every question that a host potentially could question you on. Not true. Not true. You ever hear of this sentence? I don't really know the answer to that, but I'll get back to you. It works. It works if you work it. So how about some secrets, some secret sauce about being interviewed? I know you're salivating. So the number one secret is people say this. People say, I want to get booked. I want to get booked on media. I want to be interviewed, but I don't know how. I don't know how and I'm frustrated. I want to be asked to an interview, but I don't know what to prepare. I don't know how to submit myself. I don't know how to show up and deliver a great interview. And they have no idea what to do after an interview. So I'll tell you a couple of stories here. Jill, whose birthday it just was, a professional hypnotist, also had no clue. And she worked with me. When Jill came to me, she was nervous. She felt unfamiliar with the interview process. She knew she wanted it, but wasn't clear how to go about doing it. She was actually one of my original coaching clients, and she had a growing business she really wanted to get out in the world. And what I can tell you is the two times that she had been interviewed previous to working with me, she knew they didn't go over well. Um, the interviews were actually tepid at best because I was able to listen to them. And she really wanted to get some skills around this. So she was a great coaching client because she implemented everything that I taught in Ultimate Visibility Formula. And a few weeks into our show, she booked herself on another show, right? This was a, this was a terrestrial radio show, and Jill got interviewed. And when the interview was done, the producer said, can you stay on the line? And the producer said, 
by the way, that was so amazing. We would like to book you to come back on a second time. She was so amazed, like night and day, right? She was very confident. She was very in her body and present. She knew exactly what to deliver and how to deliver it. And she got feedback right away. And the feedback was, we loved you. We want you back. Jill was so adorable at this confirmation. And I still remember that one of the things she did <laughs> was start to gush to the producer and say, oh my God, oh my God, I've been working with this coach, Debbie Dashinger. And of course, it was adorable, right? And, and, and unnecessary at the time, but she, is, uh, she was so present and so happy. And she's gone on, I want to say how proud I am of Jill, because I hopefully she'll see this, and I want her to, I want her to hear this. I saw her when I went to Canada, however many months ago. But I, I just also want to say that what I love about someone who's committed like Jill, who learns, who studies with a coach, learns, implements, and takes it out and starts using it and seeing huge results, and then really is encouraged to use it. I mean, she now runs her own retreats her own workshops, right? Picks her own places and, and does these beautiful luxury retreats because that's what being visible can do for you. And this is how you attract your clients. So Jill felt the same way. She was very unsteady when she first started, but she was really committed to work in it. And there are so many other successful people who have come through the program and done the same. I know she thought in the beginning, I don't even know what the heck to talk about or how to share my wisdom or show up or not be nervous and laugh and all, all, all sorts of other things. But you know what? Completely she changed it around and, and she changed around her career too. Um, Steve, another client of mine, uh, Steve, completely different story in the fact that he, he worked with works with some really big, sometimes I like to name who he works with because it's really impressive. But anyway, doesn't matter. Think about a big, Big, think about several really big company names. That's him. He he speaks at these places, and he um, he's actually their uh, the CEO's coaches. Like think about coffee companies, think about NFL teams, and things like that. So Steve came to me because he said, "Wow, I'm functioning here, and it's, it's, it's successful. I make a good living. I'm happy. I love my clients. They love me. But guess what? Something's missing." Like, I want to be that much bigger. I want to be able to command where I speak. I want my book to be on every chair. I want my message to be out there so actually I'm sought after. So that was the strategy we set up for Steve was how to get him out, someone who's a player already, but allow him to be recognized at a whole new level. And that's what happened. He learned what not to do, how to stop trying to dominate the show, how to slow down, how to have an intention for every interview, how to serve the host and their audience with that knowledge, and also where the right shows. So once you have the skills down and I can get them on the right shows, thing, I still get texts from the guy saying, thank you, man, you changed my life. Man, thank you. Ooh, man, you changed my life. <laughs> Second secret sauce. Have your systems set up in advance. Some people submit themselves for interviews, but they don't often know the proper procedure. And we can tell as a host, if you've been out there, I'm over 12 years, how about you? You've been out there for a bit. You know what it looks like when they come in from an agent, a publicist, or an individual who's savvy, who's professional. And guess what? You also know when someone is not. I don't know about you, um, Delete. I don't have time. I don't have time to teach someone who wants to be interviewed all the points. You, you must know that we're inundated, most of us. We don't have time to hold anyone's hands. We receive so many requests from people all the time. And if we've nurtured our audience, like this is our business, those are our peeps, I'm not, I'm not going to tell my audience to sit through somebody who doesn't know what they're doing and doesn't know how to deliver content. You have to have a good seasoned guest, right, for the right conversation. So you need actionable solutions. I, I had a client who came to me by the name of Frank. And Frank's, this is such a, 
He was such a great client. So here's the dealio with Frank. Frank came to me and said, I need to work with you. He wanted to be, a, sorry, I'm so, every so often checking who's out there. So yo, it's good to see you. I'm glad you're rolling and laughing. Um, so Frank came to me and said, I really want to do this. Teach me how to do this because I don't think this works. What don't you think works, Frank? I don't think that this works being interviewed and getting results. Au contraire, really? Because it worked for me and it works for all my clients. So I said, what do you mean? He said, I have submitted myself for 10 interviews and I don't hear back from anybody. All right, so what I know is there's one common denominator, and that's Frank. So I said, why don't you send me what you're sending out so I can take a look before our first session? And I looked, ta-da, I knew immediately what was going on. Of course, I wouldn't have booked him either. So the first thing we dealt with in Frank's session was how he is going after uh, podcasts. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what he was writing. Uh, I'll use my name, okay? Dear Debbie, I'm writing to come on your Dare to Dream podcast. I have written a book called X. It's about to launch on this date, and I'd love some support as I'm going for bestseller. If you'd like to know more about me, here's my website. I hope to hear from you soon. Most sincerely, Frank. OMG. So he didn't know. He was doing the best he could could with what he had, right? But when you're getting a godzillion, me, 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 I want to be on your show, I want to be on your show, no kind of do. You can't send something like that out. First of all, it's clear he has no idea who I am or what my show is. He's just writing to get on a show. You need to let someone know I'm familiar with your show. Second of all, why you and me? What are you bringing that my audience hasn't heard before? I need to know you're delivering content and I can rest easy. Third of all, like you got any experience? Because that would be nice too. I want to know you know your way around a microphone, you've got professional equipment, you know how to show up, you know how to speak, not just on and on ad, ad, ad infinitum, but you also know how to deliver a statistic, a story, a soundbite. I mean, I want, I want to know you're good at what you do and that it's going to be worth my while and me sharing you with my audience. So if you can't address some of those things succinctly, and by the way, do not ever say to a host, here's my website. Do I look like someone who's got three extra hours to look you up and read about and read this and maybe look at your press media site? I mean, why would I do that if you can't tell me in an email who you are and what you can do? I'd rather be out playing golf, frankly. So <laughs> I'm sorry. You gotta be able to talk about this stuff right up front and be hummish about it. Hummish means honest. So yeah, Frank, clearly, in our first session, that changed, and then we sent him back out. Professional media kit, killer pitch letter, know the show if he was a fit, started taking the right approach. He did the research, addressed people so they were clear. They, he knew the program. Understanding we've curated our audience, and so he was showing up to really deliver and be good to them, and his systems were in place. So secret number three, be memorable, stand out, be interesting, be entertaining, be polarizing, tell us something new, for goodness sake. Look, I, most of us talk about the same stuff, right? If you're going to talk about health, all right, fitness, all right, weight loss, all right, love. But what is unique about that subject that only you know and teach? That's what you need to lead with. And always lead with your best stuff, by the way. You want to get that in because, you know, if the show goes in a different direction or goes quicker or slower, or, you know, maybe you get off on a tangent that's really positive with the host, know you got your best information in at the beginning. And illustrate your point. Use brevity for good back and forth. A conversation is awesome for those of us who are hosts, allow that to happen, the value, the content. Your book or your business is gonna get you on a show, but it cannot be the entire show's conversation. You don't want that to happen. Remember, it's the show's host, it's the host's show. It's the show's host. It is the host's show. They wanna ask the questions. They wanna interact. Let them lead. Please. 
with interviews, what you put in and when you do a good job, it comes back viral. Media, PR, it offers huge exposure for clients, followers, sales, filling workshops. So if you're a leader and an entrepreneur and you find yourself working too hard, this is your way out. This is the way to start bridging that gap and opening that door. Find the right shows. Find the right niches for your message. Have you guys ever heard of Oprah Winfrey? Ed Sheerhan? The Kardashians? Warren Buffett? I mean, none of them suddenly had a microphone placed in their face and were amazing. They had interview coaching, all of them. They had media coaching to learn how to be fantabulous every time they were interviewed to understand how to knock it out of the ballpark. That's why all of us need this level of training. Because if you're going to do it, why wouldn't you want to be superb and relaxed at it? Know that every time you show up, whether for, it's for five minutes or 30 minutes or an hour, like, I got this. I, you know, I've even had really bad days, to be honest with you. Who doesn't, right? But you can't let it influence an interview. And I've, had, I've been interviewed on other people's shows. And it's like, yeah, what else? Pass the butter. You know, I still got to show up. And even if energetically you're off, like you got to know how to be so good that it supports you. No matter what's happening in your life, you still do a great job. It really is incumbent on us if we're going <clears> to <throat> say yes to being interviewed. I believe that media coaching is very important. Why? Media coaching is important. Control your story or somebody else will. Learn how to message yourself. Good messaging skills translate to networking, to parties, to visible mediums like speaking from the stage. Remember your gifts? They are meant to be shared. Share your light. You have something you know and that we need to learn. It's just about how to get the information out in a way that can be received. We all have a really short time to captivate people. Nine seconds. Nine seconds to share what we offer from a nine second pitch to a one minute pitch. You need to get what you do, what you stand for, whom you stand for, and how you stand out. How are you gonna do it, right? You gotta know your message. And once you know, then you can shine on media. Do you understand that? How many of you are getting value of this so far? Because I may just like light up something here. So if you're receiving, if you're somebody who says, I'll figure out how to be interviewed when I have time, who wants to add something out, or I'll just figure it out on my own, I'll Google it. <laughs> or I'll do it whenever. You know what five-eighths of whenever is? Never. Like, you get this or you don't, but this is the most auspicious time. I think we can all agree that this is a pretty, pretty, pretty important time. So acquire the skill my point is this most people just don't sit still long enough to invite in big visibility they'll keep doing what they're doing without a plan to generate visibility if you're a professional if you don't want to be visible why are you in business if you don't want people to see or hear you why are you in business if you don't have visibility then your community is missing out your world is missing out on you, knowing you, knowing that your business exists, we all require a plan to generate visibility and a need. We need a strategy. How are we going to execute it? So the question is, why do you want to be interviewed on radio and podcasts? What do you think it's going to do? Thanks, Nisha. What do you think it's going to do? Right? <clears throat> it's powerful. Like if you have a voice in the world to create a business and a lifestyle that allows more money, more support, you see other people in your field, this happens a lot. Oof. Y'all are sitting back there going, think of a name right now because you know that name is being interviewed and you see their name on this podcast and that station and that stage. And there's a part of you that sits back and says, why is that not me? Because, you know, maybe they got media coaching. Like it could be as simple as that to open the golden door. And why couldn't it be you? 
And if so, rather than having like that separation and comparison, why not allow that to inspire you to go, damn, I'm going to get go get me some media coaching. Like it's time. It's time for me to make this so much easier and let people know I exist. Yoo-hoo. I got something amazing to share. Why not you? Craft your message. So the message that goes out on the show and the, to the listeners, maybe you need to refine your message so it's clear and distinct and impactful when you know your message about who you are, what you do, and what services. <clears throat> excuse me, you'll be so clear to not go off on a tangent and you'll be affected by being clear and compelling and to the point. Maybe you want to travel more. Maybe you want to collaborate with world-class experts and share the stage or the microphone with them. Interviews absolutely propel you out in the world so you can be that go-to expert. Those doors can open. Visibility is an invitation for up-leveling with ease. Interviews can open opportunities to travel for work. This is happening for me now, for sure, in a really big way. It is a great way to travel the country and travel the world. And mm, we can write it off. (laughs) Isn't that great to see the world and write it off? Because there's business involved while you're enjoying traveling. So there's nothing wrong with any of these. There's nothing right with every one of these, but get super clear why you want to be interviewed. Why you? Why now? Who? Second question I want you to answer is who? Who do you want to speak to when you're interviewed? That's really important. Some people say, I just want to be interviewed because there's work on earth and like in general, it'll be fine. But when you get interviewed on a podcast, you can trust you will be heard by a highly targeted and engaged audience. So if somebody is willing to listen to a 30 to 60 minute interview with you, you can bet they're interested in your topic, align yourself with the right shows and hosts and deliver that topic. The third piece is what? What do you want to be interviewed about? Assuming you had exposure you wanted. You can be featured. You can constantly find yourself teaching people. So if you're managed to get interviewed every single day leading up to and during your bestseller book launch, for example, your book campaign is probably going to be very successful. I can tell you I used it every time I became an international bestseller. 100%. So the third question you need to answer is really about what method are you using to get booked on interviews? Do you know where the right shows are for you? Is that method consistent with the result you're getting? So instead of starting your own podcast, you can be interviewed by somebody else and still get all the benefits that podcasts provide. You can take advantage of audiences that are already existing on podcasts that are built in by being featured. And you might think that Getting interviewed on a top podcast is a pipe dream, but I am here to tell you it is not. It is so much easier than it seems. You don't have to be a millionaire. You don't have to be a celebrity to be in the spotlight. What if I told you that there are tons of popular podcasts out there that would love to have you as a guest? And it's true. Being featured on a podcast has huge benefits. So to that point, I want to say that if that is so, and you can do that, Why wouldn't you want to be wonderful? And this is really where the media coaching comes in. So again, ultimate visibility formula. If you're chomping at the bit, if you're feeling a wee hungry, if you're ready to deep dive, I'm ready to take you there. I've got a guarantee to this program. So like in a couple of weeks, if you're like, I'm not getting this, you get a full money refund. No one's ever asked before. They haven't because everybody's gone on to Excel. But just know that's in place. Go to debbyd.net slash visibility. So, you know, here's a big SEO boost. You can get thousands of visitors a day. It increases your authority. If you've been on a podcast that people like, you will be seen as an expert in your niche. So I'm cruising along. I'm offering a lot of stuff. Why is getting interviewed on podcasts a great marketing strategy? Oh my God. Compared to other marketing strategies, getting interviewed on podcasts is so easy to do. You could do it from your home, right? Oh, you just need some equipment. But I mean, even that, it's nominal. You just need some know-how. And then it doesn't take much time, but the the, uh, ROI is tremendous. Getting interviewed exposes you to hundreds, sometimes thousands of listeners for every single podcast you appear on. Not a bad way to get your name out there, don't you think? 
Being interviewed on podcasts is an effective marketing strategy for everyone. I have seen authors, coaches, consultants, bloggers, even real estate, right? There's a whole uh, cash out there of real estate professionals right now who have their own shows. Health experts have their own shows, authors, writers. I could go on and on. This increases awareness of who you are, your product, your service, your business. There are so many podcasts out there for every kind of business one might be in. And there are exponential numbers of people who listen to podcasts, which increases listeners increase even every day. So how are you feeling? How are you feeling? Type in the chat box. Are you eager? Are you scratching at the bit? Are you learning something? Do you feel like you can already do this? Do you feel a little more confident? Cool. So one of my clients, Kathy, got booked on the Entrepreneur on Fire podcast, and she received 200 new people on her database by the next day. And a year later, that one, not to mention many other interviews she's done, the one Entrepreneur on Fire podcast, she still gets hits, work, database increases from that one interview. So once you do a live or recorded interview, it's out there. Most of them, there's replay ad infinitum. They exist forevermore as though they're evergreen. So you have to know that it's not just even that moment you do the interview. It's like this Facebook Live, right? I'm doing this Facebook Live. Y'all are here. Thank you. But once it's done, it goes out to magic land and so many other people. I'm going to sit here and watch every day as those numbers increase and people write more and more and people join the class at debbie.net slash visibility because that's what's going to happen. Like right person talking to the right people. And even though some of you may do this now in the live moment, others will do this in the replay. And so it is for your interviews too. I also, speaking about people do interesting things, uh, and by the way, Kathy is an HR person, so I mean, oh, OMG. I, have a, I had a client by the name of uh, Danny. He worked for the IRS, and Danny wanted to open his own business. He wanted to leave the IRS and work, uh, create his own CPA firm. So he came to me because he was being interviewed on talk radio, which is perfect for him, where he should be, and he wasn't getting results. And he was listening back and knowing Something was not right, but not knowing what. So we came aboard and we worked together and he needed brevity. So for somebody like a Danny, who has an expertise in an area that talks about information that we won't ingest very easily because the words are heady, the concepts are heady, and for some people with math and numbers, you know, we go away. So we had to find a way to make it really entertaining information. And mostly I taught him how to speak in sound bites and have some unbelievable riveting information. Years, years later, I wonder if he's there because I just saw some hearts. And years, years later, Danny came to hear me speak. And uh, he's so sweet. He, he traveled to hear me speak somewhere. And he came up after and we reconnected and he said, hey, you know, I was just interviewed on this uh, L.A. drive time show and I made a copy. Of, you know, do you mind to listen to it? I'd love your feedback. I was so proud of this guy. I did listen. I did give him feedback. And I was I was really curious, actually, to see all these years later because I knew he was being interviewed. I knew he had created a very successful CPA business totally had left government work behind, and he knew he was thriving. But to hear him hitting it out of the ballpark, seeing stuff, I was sitting back and going, I didn't know that. I have to look into that. Oh, that was fascinating. Oh, that's a way to, to look at, at the numbers or at taxes. That's what we all want to be doing, no matter what our expertise is. Give us something new that nobody has told us before, we haven't heard before. Um, that's Okay, let me give you an example. Have you ever heard someone being interviewed? Like, look what year it is, right? And they're being interviewed and they're like, fear, false evidence appearing real. Don't you want to just go <sighs> and like shoot a poison dart in their neck so we're all put out of our misery? <sighs> 
I mean, don't tell us something we've heard ad infinitum nine godzillion times. That's so much that has become pedestrian that we glaze over. Give us something in a way we've never heard before. Attention grabber. Be an attention grabber is basically. Don't, don't be um, dry. Don't be boring. Be fast. Be commanding. Um, I also have these clients, Brad and Casey. They're still my clients. And, you know, they wrote a book. And so they're asking the right question. What's next? I'm ready, right? So that's what you should be doing too. This is your potential to gain clients with powerful interview exposure. Provide entertaining content. So I could go on and on with many of my clients, but I think I'm gonna wind down now unless you have some very specific questions. I just wanna be clear overall. And by being clear, I wanna say, you can do this. Just by using some of the information that I'm giving you right here, you can do this. The challenge is that there's also a lot that I haven't covered. And so we haven't touched on everything and there's so much you need to know to learn how to be successful at this. So yeah, you can make any choice. But if you feel hungry, then you're the right person. This I know. This energy has led me my whole life when I've listened to it, always been right. It's how I know the next right thing for me to do in my business. So why is knowing how to be interviewed important? Why is getting media exposure vital to your business? I hope that I've answered that. I mean, guess how many Americans alone, not even other countries, Americans alone, alone listen to a podcast? Right now, a couple of months ago, the statistics were 112. And out of that 112 million, about 57 million listen to a podcast every week, and that's just the US. And those numbers keep growing. The number of podcasts double every year. The audiences double every year. Key demographics continue to increase. And the newest demographic that is tuning in to listen to podcasts is Americans ages 12 to 24. We're birthing podcast babies. That's what I'm talking about. Over 54% of podcast consumers say they are likely to consider purchasing the brands they hear advertised on podcasts. This is why podcast radio shows are perfect for getting in front of a new audience and amassing new opportunities. It may not seem obvious to you, but podcasts sometimes have problems finding awesome guests. You could be that awesome guest. You're not required to have a huge following. You're not required to have your own podcast. You're, you are not required to have expertise in audio equipment. You, you do need audio equipment. And you need to have a story. You need to have passion. You need to have a message that you want to share with the world. That's it. So if you're feeling overwhelmed with some of this, I break it down in the class and way more. You are handheld through everything, given templates for everything, and a private session with me. If you feel like you've got a ton of value today, but you also maybe felt like you drank from a fire hose, just type in, that's me. <laughs> and a lot of you are saying you got so much so far. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so grateful to know you're out there and receiving. That's awesome. So a gentle reminder, there's so much more to learn. I'd love to teach you. I'd love to get to know you, and I'd love to help you get there. If you go to debbyd.net slash interview, excuse me, debbyd.net slash visibility, it's right there. Um, you'll learn what your speaking points are and how to put them together. You'll learn what to do if, if you flub up and how to get back on track. You'll learn how to be confident, how to be the sought after to-do person that everyone knows about. Where are the hosts? Where are the stations? During this class, you will receive contact information. You will have a pitch letter. How to put together a radio interview story. How to be 100% clear on articulating what it is you do. So what happens once you've done the interview? What to do with that? And in this new age, if you're spiritual, and many people don't want to come off at woo as woo-woo because if you're on a spiritual show, great, go for it. But what if you're on mainstream talk radio? How do you still disseminate your message with potency and have it fully received with the audience without going full woo-woo, but still being you authentically? How to be successfully vulnerable during an interview? And what to do if you're an introvert, right? The fact is I can't cover everything here in this time, but I can and do during the class. I will say this. The difference between success and failure. You know, 
if someone does ultimate disability formula and they're being in an, in an interview and booking jobs and gigs and interviews, they're in an atmosphere of celebrating their wins. They're speaking in sound bites. They're having fun. They're finding that profits are coming and more recognition. They're creating lifelong connections with influencers. Picture that. Picture that. Or you can picture the opposite. Not doing any of this, being frustrated, not knowing how to access the information to gain admission to the right people or the right stations or show, not being clear where the shows of the hosts are or where you're best suited. So if this person truly has a desire to share their message, but they still don't know how to get it out there, what do you think the difference is between the two, failure and success? It's either a lack of opportunity or it's a lack of knowledge and support. And you need to know it's not about the opportunity. I've already given you statistics. Everyone has the same opportunity. In the United States, for example, the number of people who listen to podcasts on a regular basis have doubled since 20. 2008 doubled. Today, 57 million Americans listen to a podcast every week, five times more people than watch TV. The number is growing every year. It is impressive. So let's get back to that. There are a lot of opportunities, and those are opportunities for you to get interviewed on literally hundreds of podcasts who are desperately looking for guests and hosts who may have people vying to be interviewed. So be great, have your pitch together, appear to be professional, deliver a good interview so you're asked back. So that's the difference. You don't have to be a superstar right now to be interviewed on a podcast. Some of the best podcast episodes come from people from small businesses or innovators who are not millionaires. And each and every one of you watching this right now has a story to tell, has something valuable to give away. Most important, you could be the next right person to show up. So feel free to look at the site. I've got a lot of testimonies and people and a lot of great clients. I'd love you to be one of them. And if we're a right fit, trust me, you will be one of those clients. You'll come. It just happens. It always does. So here's what you get. Ultimate visibility gives you a plan, support, skills, coaching, and a success mindset. And it happens very quickly, and while you're in the class, you start to book interviews. You will certainly book them, and if you're actually interviewed, even better, because we do live coaching. Uh, so many testimonies I could share with you, and uh, I want to go right to the point. Here's one from Renee, who says, taking the Ultimate Visibility Formula course with Debbie Dashinger was one of the best decisions of my life. I've struggled with not only finding my message, but also with how to get that message out into the world. At the conclusion of Debbie's class, I am now confident knowing what my message is, and even better, I was booked on radio and podcasts within a couple of weeks. This is from Jennifer Weber. I tell, oh gosh, I'm trying to understand. Anyway, Jennifer is rock and rolling. Jennifer, I wish Jennifer was here because her whole life has changed. Left her job, full-time entrepreneur, putting her book out in the world, being interviewed. She's amazing when she's being interviewed. So powerful. I'm going to give you your own testimony. I'm testimonying for you, Jennifer. So there's only so many spots. This is an intimate class. At 20 people, it gets cut off. So if you want to be one of those, you absolutely want to get in. It is starting next month, and when it is full, You'll have to wait. Um, I don't do this many times, by the way, because, because there's a lot of moving pieces to this alone. So if, if you're in, I would go there. There's a, a special, by the way, for those of you who are watching right now. So I make this very easy and palatable to join in. As a reminder, there's a 15-day 100% money-back guarantee. So there's zero risk at all. And if you're even sitting on the fence wondering if the Ultimate Visibility Formula is a right program for you, first of all, if it's not for you, you don't have to expect to do any work. You still have to put in the work to get somewhere to be fabulous, but I'm going to give you the step-by-step -step action plan to follow. You just have to put in the effort. You show up, and we have a blast every week. If you feel like you should be delivering professional interviews in a short time, like tomorrow, <laughs> well, okay, let me know how that goes. But if you feel like, okay, I might be ready in 60 days or less, like from today, then I can make that happen for you. If you're not interested in growing, if you're not interested in booking media interviews, this isn't for you. 
Hey, part ways, I love you. Thanks for watching. But who this is for is I want people who feel like they could be a top-notch quality person who want to be part of this amazing Ultimate Visibility Formula community because it's perfect for you if you want the step-by-step -step system, if you want to be walked through exactly what you need in order to be interviewed in 60 days or less. If you need a plan, this is for you. If you need support and accountability, this is for you. If you need to stay on track, this is for you. If you want a pitch letter and a press media one sheet, if you want email scripts and templates, this is for you that you can use in your business right now. Yes, yes. If you want to learn what your message is and massage your message and be fabulous at delivering it like you have it and you could pull it out at a moment's notice, this is for you. So what would it be worth? You have to decide. This is an investment that you literally earn back your money by your own visibility like that and then some. In our last class, somebody got booked so fast uh, from being a one-hour guest. The show got so many call-ins with her skills as a facilitator, so she started excelling at helping the audience. And this, this person in my class had never been on radio or podcast before. First time. First time. And she was scared, and she didn't feel like she should be in the limelight. She was shy. She didn't know how she, she was going to be a featured guest, but she used everything we learned, and she went for it. And you know what? Because of Ultimate Visibility Formula and everything she did around that, she now knows she's savvy and clear. She started getting clients first time, one hour. It could happen. It could happen. Her entire business has changed because now people know about her and her work. So it's decision time. You know, you have two options. You settle for what you have now and you get what you've been getting and you're wondering why that is. Or two, you make a very small investment, you give it a shot. And if it works, awesome. And if not, in 15 days, you get your money back and you literally have nothing to lose. So is it time for you to shine your light? Is it time for you to step into your greatness? You already have insight. You have unique knowledge to share. And all you need to do to learn to use media visibility is how to be interviewed, the before, the, the during, the after. So you can easily connect with your community and tribe. Let's work together toward one shining goal, and that's you, shining in media interviews. This could be you, this should be you, being known as a recognizable expert with a distinguished presence through media interviews. I am so psyched for what's possible for you, and if you're ready to get booked, to know where the shows are, and do this within 60 days or less, come on aboard, debbid.net slash visibility, debbid.net slash visibility. So thanks. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm looking forward to getting to know all of you. Thanks for those of you who interacted. And for all you future interview rock stars, I'm so psyched to work with you in the program. And I'm sending you lots of love and thanks for joining. Ciao.